All right, so I'm going to start the ISE. If you don't have a shortcut handy, or I'm in Windows 8, I could go to the uh, Start Tiles and find the PowerShell ISE. But remember, in PowerShell, as long as you have a, a console window open, you can always get to it by typing ISE. So let me walk you through a few features here. So it's loading up. Now, the PowerShell ISE in version 3 still has profiles like we did in version 2. Under File, here are all the recently opened files. So I can just select one, make whatever changes I want. Okay, and that still works. All right, so make some changes, some files. Let me show you the this region thing that I'm talking about, because I think this is really cool. I can do region, get services, and then do end region. Notice I got that little line there and the minus symbol. I can just click that. If I want, I can, let's do this again here. Let's add another one and let's do get processes. So here I might put in a command like get dash. As soon as I hit the dash, I automatically get a pop-up of all of the commandlets. Get process. Now I get the same auto completion that I do in the console. So get process assumes that if you don't type anything, it wants to give you a process name. So I'm getting all of the processes. So let's say I want to find the spooler service. I can do dash and I get all of the computer names. Now this I might have to put in a computer name. Let's do FP01. It's my file and print server in the Chicago office. And actually, I made a mistake there, didn't I? I just dragged and dropped that. Because that's my processes. But I could do the same thing with services as well. Let's do get service. Again, I can tab through or just start typing. Get service spooler, computer name, chi-fp01. So when I save this, or if I have more of these, I can collapse the ones that I don't want. Or I can come here to the menu and do toggle outlining or use the Control M keyboard shortcut. Now you also get the same thing with things like workflow or functions or any sort of keyword like sequence. Or let's come back down here and let's say I have an if statement if dollar x greater than 5 notice i got that closing curly brace or the region so using these regions allow you to organize your script and to make it easier to work with the script to get stuff out of the way that you may not want to have available to you at the current time all right, so that is the look at regions and looking at the less used files. Uh, Add-ons are still the same. They actually have added a link that will open and take you to the Microsoft website where you can go and find additional add-ons. It won't install them. You still have to go through that, but that's a nice new feature. But these things here, let me go back here. Let me do F8, show you that it runs in that current little blue screen. You can use Alt-R. To switch between the two windows is pretty nice. Let me go back to the scripting window. Snippets are the other thing I think that you'll find that will make your life much easier. Let me come down here. To access the snippets, the easiest way is to do Control J. And this will get a list of all the built in snippets. So let's say I need to do a do while loop. There, it typed it in for me. All I have to do is go in and fill in the blanks. You can also create your own snippets. There are a series of snippet commandlets. Let's do get command noun called get IC snippet import and new. I don't have in this machine, I don't have any snippets right now, but I could create a new snippet. So let's do new. ISE snippet, and they'll just prompt me for what I want. 
title. Oh, let's say train signal description, a demo snippet, and then the text will be the value that you want to put in to your snippet. And I'm just going to make this a comment saying this is a demo snippet. Take a moment to save it. Now if I run that get IC snippet, I see that and you can see the snippets are stored under your Windows PowerShell directory. So there's my snippet saved as a PS1 XML file. But now, and this will be available any time that I start the ISC, all I have to do is do control J, start typing the name of my snippet. You can see the description there, hit enter, and there it is. So that's going to be, I think, a big help. I'm hoping the community will be contributing snippets and you'll have ways to import and populate that to get a lot done by doing control J, finding the snippets, and basically building a script from building blocks that you know are good. Under Options, Tools, Options, this is where we do the configuration. Uh, this is where you can change the color scheme if you want to change the font size or the font color. Most of that I tend to just leave alone. The general settings is where you can control whether you want outlining, whether you want to see the line numbers, when you're editing duplicates, you can see all the other ones here. Uh, you can control the IntelliSense timeout. You can specify the autosave interval. So right now, PowerShell is saving every two minutes any files that I have not saved. So basically all the files I've opened right now, notice the little star there, they have not been saved. But PowerShell is saving them every two minutes in the background. And this is where you would set your number of recent files. So the default is still 10. So let me show you show command. Normally when you start PowerShell IC, it may come up. I keep turning mine off. But you can come here under view to show the command add-on. There it is. So now I can pick a commandlet. You can also filter here. So let's do like get ad user. Now it's not loaded. So I'm going to go ahead Click Show Details. Now this is going to load the Active Directory module. This Windows 8 box has the RSAT installed, so I have the Active Directory module available. So take a moment to bring it in. So now I get, here's the AD user, and here's the way that I can use it. I can put in a filter. I can pick the server that I might want to connect to. Let's say I just want to connect to Chicago DC03. Now I can insert. You won't see it right away unless you go back and show that. All right, so there's the command that I just inserted. If I wanted to tweak it in some way, I could do that, or I could go ahead and just run it from there. Or I can just run it from here. Or while that's running, I could do, now Max, I guess I can't do this while it's running. Or I could do copy and then come into my script here, control V and paste it in. So using show command, I can get a graphical way of building a command. And this will work for pretty much any command that it can find in a module. So it's a terrific tool to help you build scripts without having to do a lot of typing because it also nicely puts in the full parameter name so you get all the best practice things that we are supposed to be doing.